Welcome to Evil Podcast. In this podcast, we explore stories of darkness and horror from the mind of Dennis Sarah. I am Dennis Sarah, and this is Evil. Evil. I don't know if many of you noticed. If you just listen and never go to the website, you may not have noticed, but I am changing the format of this podcast to be more of my fiction writing, which I've highlighted in uh, several episodes. For the most part, I am steering away from true crime or historic crimes. There's plenty of podcasts out there, some very good ones I listen to as well. But I wanted to use this podcast more as a medium to get my fiction out there. Also, I just like reading my stuff. With that being said, in this episode, I'm going a little off script. The main reason is because of my podcast. I got approached by a publishing company to start doing audiobooks for them. Now you may remember episode 13 was actually delayed a couple weeks. That because of flooding in my studio area. Well that flooding has also affected my ability to do the audiobook. So in the mad scramble to get everything cleaned up. And to get the audiobook on schedule. I don't have a fictional story for you this episode. Instead... I thought I'd tell you the story about that time I almost got shot by a bullet. Real life horror story, if you will. As I was mere inches from dying. But let's go back to the beginning of that story. Cue the music. It was about 13 years ago. My oldest son was only... Well, actually, he wasn't even one years old yet. We were in the first house that me and my wife had bought. We lived in a condo earlier in an apartment before that and with my parents before that. But this is our first real house, so we were proud of it. It was, or it seemed, like a quiet neighborhood. It was in the town that I grew up in, so I was pretty familiar with it. And it was a new section, one that hadn't even been there when I was going to high school. Now, there were a few incidents that actually got us to move out of that house for fear that my children might get hurt. This is one of those incidents. And to understand this, our house had one large front window, like most houses do, that went right into our living room. Now at the time, we had purchased a curtain that was heavy, didn't let any light through whatsoever, and it covered the entire window. So if you were standing on the sidewalk staring at the front of my house, you couldn't see anybody in there. There were signs of life, of course but you couldn't make out where someone was standing or even who they were. Because of that, I think that this is just a random act. That I was almost a statistic, if you will. Just someone sitting in their home. It was late. My months-old son was upstairs sleeping. And I was sitting on my usual spot on the couch. And the couch back went right against that window. Across the room from me was our entertainment center back in the days when you had a glass door on the entertainment center. I don't know if they even do that anymore. Anyway, not a large room. The couch was probably 10 feet from the uh, entertainment center. So there I am sitting with my back to the window. Now it was one of those nights that my wife decided to come and join me on the couch for a little while. Most of the time she was tending to the child or doing something else, reading or whatever she wanted to do that night. But that night, I, I, don't, I can't even remember what was on. It was so long ago. But she decided to sit right next to me. So I moved on to my normal spot. To the left, of just a few inches. About five, six inches. Just so she could get in there and she could cuddle up to me. We were young. You know, in love. I couldn't even tell you because it had been so long. How long we sat there. After a while, she decided that uh, she wanted to do some dishes before she went to bed. And go check up on the kid. So she got up, went to the kitchen. As I sat there watching whatever it was, I didn't hear really hear a noise or a gunshot. It it doesn't happen like that. Instead, the glass door on my entertainment center shattered, and I don't mean it cracked or split or it shattered, like it exploded. Of course, that made me jump. So I was sitting there for a second, stunned, 
So I was looking at this glass door. Or the remnants of this glass door. And behind the door was your no normal fare TV VCR. It was old, 13 years ago. It might have been a DVD player, I'm not sure. Oh wait, it was a DVD player. I know that because there was a row of DVDs that were sitting there. With their spines out so you could read them and put them in. This was before Netflix. So as I sat there stunned, looking at this glass door, I, the first thought that popped in my head was there must have been... There must have been a shift or something in the weight of the entertainment center. After all, I put it together, so I can't really vouch for its integrity. So I thought there was a shift, and the weight must have clamped down on the, on the door and just caused it to break. That was the first thought that cost, crossed my mind. But when I looked a little closer, just there, and this was just a matter of two seconds, I noticed that in one of the DVDs, in the spine was a small hole and it was smoking now I years earlier I had been in the uh, military nothing uh, no tours of duty across across the ocean or in any wars but I had fired guns so I recognized it immediately it was a bullet hole so I shouted and I hit the ground after all I had no idea if someone was going to try to shoot me again my, of course, my shouting it was, it was towards my wife to stay in the kitchen and not come into the living room. Of course, being that she's my wife, the first thing she does is come into the living room. I told her what I had seen, and I, wanted, I kept shouting for her to get down, get down. I must have shouted for her to call 911 because she, she, she immediately started dialing. And I remember her going up to the window and peeking out and shouting at her more to get down, get away from the window. Now, my memory does serve me somewhat that uh, I do remember her screaming, and I can't tell you exactly when it was, when it was, if it was when I, the exact moment I told her the bullet had hit and what it was. Because when she screamed, I thought I heard tires squealing. Like whoever it was was in a car and was trying to get away. But it sounded, um, and this would be a, later cooperated with a neighbor it sounded like two cars one in op you know one in each opposite direction it was a normal street quiet street basically a dead end and those were so those are some of the fuzzy images you remember I remember the bullet hole I remember the smoking I remember the smoke coming out of it but the tire squeals I can't tell you exactly when it happened but it was this is all happened within seconds but anyway after her uh, scream she got on the on the phone with 911. Like I said, I'm not sure exactly when she started dialing, but it was within a few seconds. Now, at the time, my uh, father was a police officer in a neighboring town. And for what it's worth, the police, once they got the call, once they heard the last name, they came out in army-type fashion. They, they were all over the place. The details slipped me, but on the 911 call, I remember my wife panicking and handing me the phone, and the 911 operator had told me that I need to calm down my wife, otherwise she's going to hyperventilate. Now, I don't know about you, but um, if you've just been shot at, your adrenaline's pumping a little bit, and seeing your wife panic... And also, she, at the time, she was crying that she wanted to go upstairs and check on the kid. And I was just trying to keep her away from the window. But uh, when uh, when your adrenaline's pumping like that, your wife is screaming. And that, uh, and the operator wants me to calm her down. I don't know how to do that. Didn't expect to get a little emotional on that, but I remember that clearly now. For whatever it's worth, I... I think I did calm her down. I mean, I think the only way I could do that is tell her to make sure she goes upstairs and check on the kid. Which, by the way, through all the screaming and tire squealing and gunshot, he slept. Literally, like a baby. As I said, my father was a police officer in the neighboring uh, town. They used the same dispatch service, so all the cops knew his name, and I don't have an, a common last name, so when it was... 
brought across the radio. I'm sure that someone had asked if, if I was a relation to him. And like I said, because of that, they came out in droves and they, they scoured the uh, neighborhood. They scoured the yard. They looked for anything they could find. No shell was ever found, so either the person had fired from inside a car with an automatic uh, pistol or something, and the shell fell to the, the floor of the car, or they, they uh, shot from a revolver. What worried them the most was that, uh, and I think this worried my dad a little, at the time, is they hoped that uh, they weren't shooting at me because my father was a police officer. I don't believe that. I, they couldn't have seen me. I think our phone was unregistered at the time. I think they come find out that uh, there was a couple of theories. That uh, across the street from us, there was a guy who had just got out of prison. And, uh, uh, either a gang member or a former gang member. I, I can't tell you. that I never met the guy. But he lived there with his mother. Now, there was one incident uh, later, about a year later. No, actually, it had to be about two or three years later. Two and a half years, when my second son was just a baby. My wife was playing, on the, uh, playing with them on the front yard. They were sitting in the yard. The youngest couldn't even walk yet. And a van pulled up, screeched their tires, and this is why I was at work, screeched their tires in uh, about a... She said about 68 men poured out of there and jumped this guy right in his front yard. Of course, there's this little gang fight going on, yards for my kids. So there's a possibility that uh, whoever shot that night wanted to shoot the house across the street and not mine. But as I, I mentioned earlier, this bullet, when we all was said and done, we checked the uh, curtain and the, and the window and traced the path of this bullet. When we did that, we found out that uh, had I had I uh, sat in my spot and stayed there, if it was a normal night, if my wife just sat on her normal side, and I hadn't moved away just to be closer to with her, moved out of that spot so she could sit next to me, and that bullet would have passed right through my head. Thinking about that now, it actually gets to me more now than it did then I mean when I moved it was only a few inches so this bullet must have missed me by 6 inches 8 inches maybe but it had been any other night I would have been killed and my wife she got up minutes before this and she was sitting right there had she not done that she would have been killed just by some random act who knows, some kid showing off to the other car. Makes you wonder what would have happened. How things would have been different. My oldest son would have grew up with no father. My youngest son would never have been born. I guess I haven't thought about this as much as I thought I should. So it's those little touches of reality that change you a little bit. But sometimes you don't realize how much. And sometimes not right away. A one silly act by somebody. Could have been anybody. Who knows? A one silly little act could have changed the course of her family. And although I like to tell fictional horror stories, looking back on reality is scarier to me. But after 13 years can really appreciate what you got. So if any message for any of you out there listening, or still listening, hold close to those that you, that you care about. You never know. One silly little act, one silly little incident that you have no control over could change everything. Well, I think I'll sign off here. I, uh, I didn't plan on getting that emotional about it. I won't go through the usual uh, advertisements at the end, but uh, in fact, I 
I may not even put this out as episode 14, maybe just as a bonus track. As it uh, goes off script of what I want to do. But when I listen to podcasts, I always I always want to know a little bit more about the uh, podcaster. Now don't get me wrong, uh, a lot of times when uh, I'm listening to a podcast and I hear two people rambling on, talking to each other, asking how each other's week was, that's usually not that interesting. But when they tell me about their stories, you get a glimpse of their personality, where they came from, who they are. I appreciate that. So this is your little window into the uh, into the soul and past of Dennis Sarah. It's funny thing is I always uh, always heard those uh, pa- podcasts that uh, tell stories, and I enjoy those real life stories that be, you know people are afraid to tell. Podcasts like Riss and the Narrators, and of course the Moth. I know there's many out there. But people tell stories from their real life. And I never thought that I had anyone interesting enough. I had one that was interesting enough. Turns out I just wanted to forget it. If you want to contact me, you can do it through the website or through Twitter. I'm at Dennis Sarah. Alright, next time people. Be good.